So I'm here. I open it up to you tonight for anything. When I seem to be alone doing a task, whether it be building up the fire or doing something on the computer or anything else, it's like it's hard for me to see this extension. So it's hard to really be in the joy. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah, the, the thoughts that will come to your mind around extending, it's quite common that, that they involve body thoughts. You know, whether it's extending to, to children, extending to friends and partners, extending to neighbors in, 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 a, in a community sense, or even extending on the internet, which may not have quite such an overt thing. You don't necessarily have to be doing a Skype video call to get that feeling of, you know, it could even be a voice call where, you, where there's just a, a picture or a face, or maybe not even a face. It's just that feeling of, of something's going on. And extension is, is oftentimes associated with communication. Even when you're stroking a cat or stroking a dog and, or giving them a belly rub and they're purring or they're just just have this soft side that's coming from them. And all of that seems to involve a sense of, of communication. Uh, whether we're talking about, we, we do, we did talk about in our talk, verbal communication and nonverbal. And I'm saying a lot of it seems to be nonverbal. Uh, it could be a smile, a look, a glance, you know, as well, a, or a hug, or just a touch, as well as verbal, a whole range in there. And so, basically, communication is defined in an ego sense as, as between this and this, between you and someone else, between this person and that person. Even we see all the animal photographs on Facebook of all these different creatures together, you know, and everyone's, oh, oh, you know, there's a whole rows of them, but they still involve hugs or lying together or affection or licking or nuzzling or snuggling or something and it's involving bodies. So it does seem to be that a lot of what seems to be extension is associated with bodies. And where you're going with this is so far beyond that that, that really what, what true extension is would be like we call it creation. Uh, God creates, Christ creates, it's not even of this realm. Uh, so pure extension is just light radiating or um, purity, eternity, just radiating, extending forever and ever and ever. That's actually what extension is. But to come to that, we would say you have to align with a purpose that the Spirit has given to us to align. So. When, when you start to realize that all your busy doings and all the things you do, whether it's, you know, carrying firewood or it's working on a network for a, a, a setting up a server or, or talking on the phone or counseling someone or doing a Sunday service or whatever, there's a lot of association in the mind with communication and I call that, it's horizontal communication. So the Holy Spirit has to use horizontal communication in such a, a refined way that at some point you have an, a complete experience that the communication is what I call vertical. That it's like all of what you thought you were doing in a horizontal way, wasn't it? And you find yourself in a aha moment of communion with God. And you go, ah, aha, that's what it was always. It was never that other thing. Because remember, the ego invented linear time. The ego invented bodies. The ego invented words. Oftentimes extending is associated with words. But the ego invented the words. Words are but symbols of symbols, twice removed from reality. Even the words are part of the mesmerism. Even the words are part of this false association. And so the Holy Spirit has to work with everything that the ego made, linear time, bodies, words, everything, and work with all of that to 
to bring the mind into alignment with a purpose that is the gateway back to eternity, which is the gateway back to communion. And that's, that's like a highly developed, we'll say a highly, highly evolved state of mind where you start to realize what's real and true and natural, which is just communion. It's just communion with God. That's as simple as it is. So when we talk about avenues of extending, it's like the Spirit can give you lots of ideas, and you may have noticed, as we've been talking about extending, that you start to have ideas coming. Maybe you'd be like, oh, I'd like to travel and teach, or maybe I'd like to go on Pal Talk, or on ACIM Gather, and do some sessions there, and oh, oh, uh, maybe Google Hangout. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of seemingly digital ways to share and extend. There's ways in terms of the community to share and extend. And, and those are things that the more you give yourself over to them, there will be a transfer of training that will occur like this glowy feeling, this warm, glowy, heart-bursting kind of experience that will transfer to bringing the wood and sticking the piece of wood in the fireplace. You start to feel that same glow that just starts to transfer, transfer to absolutely everything. It's because it's a single purpose that's unifying perception that's actually helping to transfer the, you know, between the church service and the counseling and the putting a log on the fire. It just spreads and spreads and spreads. And that's what the mind training is about. That's what forgiveness, the song we listened to from Elisa Moore, that's what forgiveness is, is giving a single purpose to all perceptions and then having a unified perception that comes from that single purpose. And all those compartments were never it. Oh, I'm just tending the fire. Oh yeah, just. Who invented just, just tending the fire? Who pulled out of the whole tapestry of the universe tending the fire and, and made that so important, you know? Gave it a name, tending the fire, you know? <laughs> In heaven there is no tending the fire because everything is, is unified. So, so it's just a practice and you can feel it, it's drawing you, you know? You're being drawn deeper, deeper into the practice. And the ego will question, am I making progress? How is this helping? So I was doing the dishes or sweeping or whatever, but you've had those raking the leaves in the wind experiences before where you were happy for certainly no logical reason and, and yet it was quite observable how happy you were raking the leaves in the wind and, and you just were immersed in the joy of, of that purpose and that's what you want to transfer to absolutely everything so that there's nothing held apart from that purpose.